Levels or nothing? Y'all good? Did you already uh, press record on the jump? Oh, no. shit. <laughs> Everybody ready? I'm ready. Oh, we already record. Yeah, all right, man. Okay. <laughs> All right, man. Welcome back to the Trouble Next Door Podcast, man. The safest place in the world to explore your intrusive thoughts and curiosities. Y'all know who it be. I'm your host, Tyleek. I got Blue with me again, man. And today we got, you know, a young voice in the community who is definitely preaching a good message um, throughout social media and just throughout the community, man. We got Trackstar Kelly in the building with us. Yeah, and, um, good day. yeah we finna come well, with some I need to survive. sit up and uh, get close to the mic. Nah, I think she already I'm said good. it. You already did. Right, um, so first of all, you know, I asked everybody, how you feeling? <laughs> good, a little tired, but you know you gotta put the footwork in. You gotta yeah, do yeah, what you yeah. gotta do. This yeah. is all part of the um, part of the game. Exactly. So, yeah. right. um, so for those who don't know, you are. I mean, would you consider yourself an activist? First, I don't want to put a label on you, but um, I consider myself. Yeah, you can. Okay. okay. I can't I put it like this. I can't not consider myself an activist. Okay. With the stuff that I be doing. Okay. I, okay. Um, I know I'm a person. Um, what jack of all trades, whatever mm-hmm. you want to call it. I got mm-hmm. my hands in a lot of stuff, you yeah. know. But I was kind of born an activist. So mm-hmm. before music, before anything, you know, I was born an activist. I was born as somebody who was raised to, you know, speak out against the system and you know mm-hmm. stand up and fight for my people, you know, and enlighten my people. You know, my father raised me right. to be outspoken, you mm-hmm. know. So you know they say when you have that third eye or whatever, once yeah. you open that joint, you can't yeah. close it. <laughs> I've been woke since I was born. You know? <laughs> Basically, <Ooh>. okay. <laughs> I ain't no, that's different. Sometimes I wish I could just take a nap and go to go to sleep. <laughs> but yeah, every, hey, God got it. Got uh, we all here for a reason, and it's about time that I start living in my purpose and not running from it. You know, and just accept who I really am, who I'm supposed to be, yeah. and go with that full force. Yeah. What What would you say you really? I would say got like on the front line of. You say you was raised this way. You was taught to be this way. When did you really become a voice for the black community and the issues going on? Same thing. Since a kid, since I remember kid. being in, in, in class. Mm. I'm talking about elementary school, mm. and and this is on a, a minor scale. But mm. looking at bigger, the impact it was right. on my peers and stuff. You know, when you're doing the pledge of allegiance and shit mm-hmm. in elementary school, and everybody stand up. You know, and then for the national anthem and shit. Before Kaepernick decided to take a knee, right? And you all was doing shit, that. <laughs> one take a knee. It's just I'm not standing up. Because okay. And they asked you why you not standing up. My father told me I'm not supposed to. Stand <laughs> <up>. <laughs> <laughs> I, ain't no I mean, I, yeah, I, right. I, I was raised that way. So you in elementary school and everybody standing up. You know, doing the pledge of allegiance and everything. Everybody standing up for the national anthem. And it's like, nah, you yeah. know, we not with that. I'm not standing for that. Now, I mean, growing older, I can articulate it better. I know why I was doing it, but I yeah. just know that I was taught that, nah, we not with this. Right. So, mm. again, just little stuff like that. I remember being in class, and they teaching us our history, mm-hmm. and I'm like, that's not true. Mm. Mm. It's like, what you mean it's not true? You're lying. Like, you know, <laughs> right. I just know you're lying. I know what you're saying in that you're book lying. ain't right. And now right. I'm older, and I can look back and see. Now I can explain to you why I was lying, but I just knew it was wrong, yeah. you know, because I was taught something differently. Mm. So... I mean, when you talk about being an activist, being an activist don't mean you have to have um, a million man march. Being an activist don't Mm -hmm. mean you need to, you know, go on Instagram all day and talk to a mic or stand at a podium. Being an activist is somebody who is literally activating their people, you know. And I've been doing that since I was a kid. Mm -hmm. My father raised us not to be followers. He raised me to be a leader. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Put us in the community, and he made sure that we were going to have an effect we were basically going to be influenced our community. We mm-hmm. weren't going to be influenced by it. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that's kind of hard when you come from poverty and everything like that. Of it's course. easy. Don't get me wrong. Of course. <laughs> of course. It's easy to go it's, the other way. It's easy yeah. to go the other way. So even to an extent, I got nine brothers and three sisters. Mm. Ooh. Ain't no God, no manual on how to raise that many kids. Right. Like, yeah, that's a, if that's a lot. you talk to my father today, he'll tell you he ain't raised us. He instilled morals and principles in us, mm-hmm. spanked them into us, and, like, released us into the world to do what we were supposed to do. Right. And... That's, that's what I did. So, I mean, again, this whole activist thing, the mindset of it, mm. it's been, it's been it's in been me. In you. And, right. and it's sad because when you're a kid, you don't even know you've been active. Right. Right. You know, I'm, I'm a kid. I'm right. just, this is how I was raised. It's all I know. And I'm speaking out. So, you know, looking back now, it's like I said, I've been an activist since I'm talking about. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> 
real lie. Since I was able to speak up <laughs> and speak my truth, yeah, yeah. I was after it. Niggas and, first words was you lying. How, you, how, lying. Uh, <laughs> you lying. Tell the truth. <laughs> Tell the truth. Tell the truth. Tell the how truth. important do you think it is to for for kids to learn that nowadays? To learn what? As far as like being taught a certain way, like um, like the truth. It depends on who you got around you. I mean, I was blessed to say the least. Like I said, um, my my future, my 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 life could have turned out so much different. Mm-hmm. I look at my friends and people who are close to me, and like the ones that I grew up with, mm-hmm. and really the only thing I can say saved us, other than just basically being blessed with certain talents and stuff, was like we had a village. So okay. everything that was a struggle for us then is a plus for us now. So right. when mm-hmm. we okay. got that message. It was up to us to hold each other accountable. Right. So when we were out in the community and we see everybody doing this, I remember the first time, my first time being in a trap house. It before it was actually a trap house, mm-hmm. you know, it was like they was gentrifying shit and you know the border some stuff up. Right, and right, and right. We had our own little hangout in that joint, and all my friends go in that joint and they smoking, black and miles, bro. Really? Oh, black and miles is crazy. Black and miles is crazy. Kids, kids, black kids. And miles is crazy. like we kids, we like. Right, yeah. Anywhere from eight to like eleven years old, but right. we it's like twenty of us, and we all in that joint, and they pull the a little, bando. pull a little. Mm-hmm. And they called it the bando. We called yeah, it the bando. The bando yeah, so man. it's like, hey, and I'm looking, and I'm like, I'm looking at my brother. I'm like, nah, we ain't on that. Right, we ain't on that. So just that stuff right there, them little, them little moments right there. Right. If you don't have nobody and still that into you, mm-hmm. then. You kind of lost. That's why I feel for a lot mm, of the kids yeah. because most of them don't have fathers, most of them don't have mothers, and they raised by their environment. They raised by their trauma. They raised yeah. by social me- social media these days. Yeah. Hey. So Big it's, 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 it's kids who it's people who were basically had kids as kids, mm-hmm. and they don't know how to raise kids, right. so they let the iPhone raise them. Mm-hmm. Here, take this. Watch mm-hmm. YouTube. Watch Instagram. But they yeah. don't know that these kids. They not dumb. They brilliant. So you mm-hmm. give them. Yo, gabba gabba, or you give them <laughs> what's that? The backyard against yeah, the next thing you know, man, they watch your power just like you. I'm saying. <laughs> they, Honestly, they, they know t- what's going on. They telling right. you don't spoil the episode. Right, right. right. <laughs> New so, episode come on to mind. They again, it's like you got you got to have some type of positive influence around you to actually mm-hmm. encourage you to do um, do right, and that's one thing that because I had my father, and not only that, I was talented, so a lot of males around me did a lot of stuff to keep me way mm-hmm. you know and it was even to the extent where i wasn't even allowed to be a kid in a lot of situations because i always yeah. got held accountable right you know mm-hmm. you could have faster it, yeah. it's 20 of us sitting right there everybody doing something wild rock come here why rock <laughs> <laughs> we all just went in this store and, and stole people right. call me out and look at me and say you knew better so they didn't know better right. he older than me Right. He taller than me. He fatter than me. <laughs> yeah. I'm the smallest motherfucker in here. You gonna look me in my eyes and tell me I'm the one who's supposed to know better. Yeah. So they instilled that leader mindset into me. Like I was hold, held accountable from a kid, bro. Yeah. And looking back now, you know, as a kid, it wasn't fun. You know what? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That was not. Now and it's like it's a blessing because I'm able to step up there and right. actually lead my people because to an extent, I feel like that's what I was always supposed to do. Mm. Hey. When it's destined for you, it's destined. <laughs> yeah, you yeah, can't you escape lie, it, bro. <laughs> you um, what's your issue right now in our community or, or the black society in general that you feel like is just not getting enough recognition? Mm. Um, it's not being talked about enough. Okay. I feel like, I don't know if this answers your question, but I'm going to dive into it anyway. I feel like we got to be a lot more accountable mm. um, for the stuff that's going on in our community. Mm. and. Okay. I am one too. I told you I've been activist as a kid, so I can mm. break it up and down and tell you how the system and what occur? Hell yeah. No. Man. I can break it up and down <laughs> and tell you how the system <laughs> fucked us up. Yeah. Left, right, up, down, all positions, all ways. But at the end of the day, like you can't expect somebody who's raping you to help you. Mm. Simple as that. Right. So it's like if I know that their mo- mission is right. to fuck our people over, then the only people I can rely on to help us is us. Right. And before it's us, it's me. So mm-hmm. I got to do the inside work. We fuck a revolution. We got to evolve. Mm-hmm. So that's, that's okay. we, we, we think that we are progressing because of symbolic gestures and all types of other shit that go on on social media. But in mm-hmm. reality, we're regressing. People in the 1920s, 30s, and 40s were living better than Way we were. Way better. People in the yeah. 1940s and 50s were living better than us. 
and people can argue about it. Oh, no, nah, we got, what, a Roly, <laughs> a Bentley, a couple niggas got this, that, and the third. A no, car? that's social media. That's what, you know, Don't nobody got shit Kind of like real. a big house, you know, that's it. Everybody, everybody, only thing niggas got is an opinion. Right. If, if, if we being completely too, honest. Too many of those. Too many of those, too and that's many. not getting us nowhere. And uh, most of the time when we have an opinion, it's about each other. So everybody want to yeah. talk about it. Don't nobody really want to be about it. Right. Real life. So um, that's what I realize. I feel like we got to be accountable. Like, you know, the wars on Twitter. Mm-hmm. Why don't got, you, 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 go, you heard of black Twitter, right? Yeah. yeah. Why don't got white Twitter or Spanish? Well, we don't talk uh-huh. about shit like that. Right, that right, is, right, yeah. right. When we, we talk about black Twitter, it's a whole bunch of toxic bullshit where we just sit there and we degrade each other, we attack each other, and there's mm-hmm. nobody working. Mm-hmm. You the problem. It's the niggas. Mm-hmm. No, it's the women. It's the niggas. It's the women. It's the kids. It's mm-hmm. the Right. No, it's you, motherfucker. I actually got a question that says, do you think that, like, social media or the black Twitter, the black, whatever you want to say, do you think that plays a part in, like, tearing apart? Yeah. It's the, the, it's the black it's image and black family. Public image, image yeah. number one. Um, all so like, type, I feel like social media is, again, there's a lot of stuff that goes on we call black culture. Mm-hmm. To right. Extent, but I think black culture is, one, is very subjective, but it's been, you know, manipulated mm. and on a mass level to where it's basically convincing people that black culture is toxic bullshit you right. know yeah. they're just hopping around with guns and shit like right. that over sexualized women everybody want to be an instagram poet they want right. to call it sexual liberation shut up put some clothes on yeah yeah like it's like we we, we we sit there and we try to make excuses for why we fucked up when we know we fucked up because of what's going on so right hold yourself accountable do a healing work and instead of being a product of your environment mm-hmm. become a product in your environment. Mm. And that's what my father raised me to be. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? That's what my mother raised me to be. You know, they ain't have all the answers, but one thing they were sure about is we won't go be no motherfucking followers. Yeah. We won't go be, I don't know what you, you might not be a leader, but I promise <laughs> you, you won't be no followers. Right. Let me ask you this, though. <laughs> you think we could, like, shift and change that idea on social media? You think ch- social media can change? Um, it's going to take a collective. It's going to take people with influence to actually do it. And yeah. the issue with that is I feel like a lot of people with influence and power that we idolize in our community, they ain't for niggas. They might be a nigga. They not for niggas. They control. Mm. They paid by people who are pushing a specific agenda. Mm-hmm. And as long as they are paid and taking money from people who pushing that agenda, that's what they're going to do. So right. we got to look at them and not get spanked. Because, again, you sit here and you got people who um, looking at Lil Wayne or little baby, and don't get me wrong, I love they, they, they some good artists and stuff right. like that. But it's like you can't preach death and destruction into your community all day, and then once a year you do something good, and then we forgive you. You know what I'm saying? Right. Right. You can't okay. over sexualize the kids all day. You can't tell girls to basically fuck their way up the ladder and shit like that. And then when we sit there and we see the consequences of everything that's going on, you like, oh, blah, blah, blah. no, it's us. We the problem. The kids do what they talk. Mm-hmm. So if yeah. they see you doing this for attention, they gonna do it for attention. Right. So you can't be mad at them for doing it for fucking attention. They sponges. They soak in everything. Again, they not stupid. They just do they, what they talk. So we gotta just be accountable. And again, I'm a black man, mm-hmm. and I feel like men are the leaders of the community. And we could talk about that all day and night. Or mm-hmm. da, da, da. oh yeah, they somebody got like, an opinion about that. Look, Trust me. As a man, I feel like I'm supposed to be a leader in my community because. When it's time for war, that's how I look at life. I don't look at life as just what we live in. I look right. at I've been at war since I was a kid. Right. Okay. So when you're going into battle, where are all the able bodied warriors? Mm. They in prison mm. or they on drugs or they on Instagram jumping around looking goofy. So right. it's like that's why we losing. <laughs> that's why we losing the battle. Because everybody's teaching us that we supposed to fight this way when in reality, nah, this is a whole nother battle going on. This is a spiritual battle going on that everybody's neglecting and the moment that niggas step up and start fighting that battle, the women are naturally going to follow because that's what, that's nature nurture, bro. That's mm. what happens, bro. Mm. You can sit here and, oh, women supposed to submit and da 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 It's like, nigga, the moment you start leading, she's going to follow him. She don't follow you, I guarantee you somebody else will. Yeah. And that's the person that you focus on. Mm. Don't focus on the people who don't, if Harriet Tubman focused on every motherfucking slave that didn't want to follow her, mm. we wouldn't know who Harriet Tubman was. Mm, okay. She had to smoke a couple motherfuckers. Perfect example. I was about to say, Perfect example. Harriet, Harriet, they play on she that. She had on to that smoke railroad. a couple. She had That's to smoke a, a few people. I like that example. We're Perfect lie. example. So as a man, all you got to do is, again, again, I get it. Niggas be on perkies. It's all type of <laughs> drugs. We emotional. We an emotional generation. Yeah. We be hypersensitive yeah. to the shit that's Facts. going on because we Facts. were raised a certain way. And you can't. You know what I'm saying? It, 
It's admitted. It is what the fuck it is. Mm-hmm. But we got to go here from it. We got to elevate. You know what I'm saying? We got to evolve. Mm-hmm. And sit here and blaming other motherfuckers when you can just do your part. That's all you got to do. Do your part. Don't worry about what's going on in the world. Do your part in the chain. And your part can be some people are supposed to be out there on the front line swinging the sword. Some motherfuckers right. supposed to be in the back with the arrow like this type shit. Right. Some motherfuckers supposed to be cooking the food. Some, some people, people supposed to be, yeah, to be, it's, it's medics and stuff. Do like your that, part. You know? Do your part. Stop worrying about what other people not doing and do what the fuck you supposed to do. And we're going to be okay. That's how I feel about black men in our community. Do what the fuck you supposed to do. I don't care why your baby mama feel the way she do. Nigga, just do what you supposed to do for your kid and mm. find peace with that. Mm. Find peace with it because you made a baby with them with her. So <laughs> find peace with it. <laughs> you can't unmake the baby. It's here already. Mm-hmm, yeah. yeah. It's it's here. So That's I just feel like all around, I'm not even I'm done playing games with everybody. I'm like, look, you wanna be a leader? Be a leader. That's how you do it. Mm-hmm. If not, then you just in the way. And what did I tell you about Harriet Tubman? Right. You know, I I don't want to kill a nigga, so I'm just going to leave a nigga alone. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. I ain't got to you know? shoot you. Let the wolves get your ass. <laughs> you know? Real life. I'm going to follow these stars or whatever they told us you follow. I keep giving them stuff to the North Star. Yeah, the, uh, the North it was, Star. Was yeah. the, what was it? The, the North yeah, Star. Shit. Yep. I told her they was lying about that, too. <laughs> <laughs> Probably, <laughs> to be honest. Drinking gourd. Come on, follow it. They got us singing all types follow of songs about gourd. this shit, bro. But it sound cool, though. Because yeah. what they teach us, our history started, we nothing more than slaves, bro. That's Speaking, when it started. Speaking to that, though, like you saying, um, you was talking about how we've been manipulated to an extent. Of Real like, I feel like, right, too. to an extent of we're like, even the things we think is ours, they're not even ours for real. It's somebody behind the, behind the scene puppeteering and pulling the strings or whatever. So this is like a, it's kind of a, a radical question that people often talk about. Do you think integration killed us or I think what it, what it, have, um, what it have like made us bet like how you know they had places like Tulsa the intent and behind it um was with, with MLK and mm-hmm. the whole movement and everybody was pure but when it started to unfold right yeah he saw how he fucked up mm. and when he saw how he fucked up he switched course and he <laughs> tried to speak out on it and they smoked his ass Mm. I can say shit like this now because they done already came out after years. Like, it's not <laughs> no conspiracy. Right. Like, yep, they killed that nigga. Yeah. They yeah. did it. They admitted to it. Yeah. They admitted to it. So, I, I told y'all niggas y'all did it. That's how I feel right now. Mm-hmm. That, too. that too. I, I um, of, of late, they just been admitting to random things. But again, people need to start listening to the conspiracy theories to how I fucking feel because every time people sit here and say, oh, it's a conspiracy, it comes out to be true. I mean, some of them would be like far left. No, no, okay. I mean, of course, far like, out, out extremes. Out the extremes. You need to critically think. Okay, yeah, there we go. You need to there critically think. Yeah. There we go, because niggas you know, be saying some crazy now, now me, shit. It, again, so somebody who is actually, I read into certain stuff, I do my research. Okay. I can read between the lines of what they're saying, what okay. they're trying to say. To the average person, it'd be seeming out of this world. But it's mm-hmm. like, bro, the factual information that's out there, mm-hmm. put it like this. And it's the game they play. You got somebody out there who really research what's going on in our history, what's going on behind the scenes, and they come out there and tell it. Mm-hmm. And everybody look at them like they're crazy. Mm-hmm. You know why they look at them like they're crazy? Because they get somebody like Kanye to go up there and say the same truth. Mm-hmm. And they use celebrities that we idolize and stuff who fucked up in the head to speak the real truth. And but then, yeah, okay. I believe now, that. now they won't believe it. I believe it. Right. That. So it's almost, it's a tactic that they play. So it's like... That. They, they sit there and they say right message, wrong messenger. Right. And it's mm. like, well, this nigga been saying it ten years before yeah. he said it. Mm-hmm. Right. Why right. wasn't y'all listening to him right. when he said it? You right. know why? Because he ain't got a million followers. He ain't fucking no bitches. He ain't got a Bentley. <laughs> it's like, it's not. Right. The black culture. The seed right. has been planted already. Exactly. The so Black culture. You know? Yeah. It be what it be, bro. At the end of the day, I mean, <laughs> don't get smite. <laughs> don't get smite. <laughs> hey. Um. What's your what's your thoughts on uh <laughs> Are you your thoughts on uh Mario Bowser, man? And, and how she Oh I right. <laughs> 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 Nah bro, but like what's okay. What's your thoughts on our current mayor? How many times do I get to plead the fifth on this show, bro? Mm, How many bro, cards man, I get? Look, you give out seven more. I get <laughs> about seven more. One, two, Cause three, she keep man. winning. I mean, she right. keep winning. You know she why do. she winning? And who, who, who are competition? Mm. Be real. I mean, from a, from, from a people perspective, like name me someone. This is unheard name of. Out there. Who's unheard of. No. Okay. Okay. So no. No. So, no. It's not. I'm get name a person. So if you speaking, if you speaking like numerically in terms of popularity, and whatnot, 
No, nobody. not even that. Just, just know, just real shit. Who do you think should be the mayor of this city? Cheryl Lynn. All right, I agree. Okay. He from he, he he's, he's from, from he's from here. He from he, he, he from the city. What, you know why he not? Why not? Because she's the Democratic candidate, mm. and they have money. Mm. Mm. There's no deeper than that. Right. They have money. They got power. They got influence. They so do. The person who get elected is gonna be the person that they support. Mm. Next. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. 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 Like, I mean, unless we gonna come together and but really the, stand behind it and really yeah. do that, that's the only way it happens. But it's like, bro, there's so much stuff going on behind the scenes in politics. Like, you got Democrats who talk about uh, election fraud and this, that, and the third all day. When yeah, in our she, city, it's like it's going on here. Yeah, mm-hmm. she was winning. Cri- like when I was watching the election on TV, she was winning by like. 75% as soon as this shit started. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> it was like, oh, we're going to time up the vote. She already up 75%. Right, okay. like, what the fuck? He's not talking to city no more. Yeah. It used to be 70, 80% black. Right, now right. it's what, 40, 60, or like 50, 50? Something, Something like, like that. that. I think it's 40, 60. All right, so check this. Because they gentrifying a lot of it. Mm-hmm. Most of the black people in the city can't even fucking vote. Right. Or don't. Or don't. Or don't. So, and even if they all did, you got to understand, this ain't. Our city, no more. right, right. So the people who look at the future, not the past. Mm-hmm. The, this the city is heading towards being occupied by politicians and children of politicians. Mm-hmm. Mm. Can you afford to live in DC? Hell, Hell no. Nah. Can you afford to live <laughs> in DC? Nah. Hell nah. Nah. I've been here my whole life, and I can't afford to live here. We've been f- completely honest. Nah. So it's like the only people who can afford to live here are politicians, businessmen, and people who are, you know. Children of them, so right. it's like that's what they heading towards. That's the future. That's mm-hmm. why they putting these dumbass condos and stuff up. So yeah. when they voting and stuff like that, they keep looking to keep somebody in office who is going to appease to that. Mm-hmm. And if I'm being completely honest, Treyon ain't that guy. He, no, he not. I he mean, he, he he's looking out for. He want to look out for us. But yeah, at the end of the day, we don't fucking matter to them. <laughs> right. We don't. So that's why he not gonna be in office. And I'm not saying it's like it will never happen. I don't like to speak that into existence. But no. I just know how politics work. Mm-hmm. The only mm-hmm. reason we got a black president Obama in there because they wanted a nigga in office. Exactly. And yeah. you see, after they got that nigga in office, and, and they got him out of there. <laughs> what they do? They yep. gave us a, <laughs> what they, they do? Exactly. So it's like it's like politics really is. It's it's all a scam. It's all comes down to money, power, mm-hmm. and shit like yeah. that. And politics if you ain't got is no a business money too. No power, then why is you even in that game? Right. It ain't for nobody. People get in that joint, even the ones who try to be righteous, they get in there and they see what's really going on. And they get discouraged. Mm-hmm. Now I've had the blessing to be like. You know, get a certain perspective on it because I've been in certain rooms since a kid type shit. Mm-hmm. You know, I've had a certain perspective since a kid, and then getting older and I'm able to be in certain rooms and see how stuff works. And it's like, oh, it don't work how we think it works. They paint the picture of, oh, everybody just show up and vote and does right. No, mm-hmm. nigga. Uh, First of all, it's so much marketing that goes into politics that I just seen some crazy ass marketing right. campaign commercials that you wouldn't even <laughs> think would be on TV nah, yeah, bro. Yeah. they showed a nigga in his house and his underwear and all that like this this the person you want elected nah. bro, that shit was crazy that shit was crazy bro I just seen all types of campaigns if they don't want you in there they'll do anything bro and that's I'm when it become dangerous they're just fit. real life we got you got Trey Young White bro that man can get all the way to the front door bro and then they'll find some shit that happened in his life that ain't got shit to do with him. But mm-hmm. just because he's in the yeah. southeast. Right. Yeah. Oh, Treyon's cousin Rico did this, that, and third, and he died. Right, that, that, right, that, that, right. That. It's right. like, nigga, everybody who lived in the hood got a cousin named Rico that did some wild ass shit. <laughs> but to the, yeah. to the world, the lifestyle that we live, right. it's only some movie shit. Right. It's not a reality. So that's why they treat niggas the way they do. Mm-hmm. You know? If any nigga who, um, they sit there, they see this on TV, right? And they say, oh, the stuff that's on TV, that's not how black people really are. But they are actually copying and mocking right. and mimicking right. the style of the stereotypical black person who's really damaged and struggling. Right. So when you put that out there, it's like, yes, the fuck it is what's going on in the right. hood. It's obviously over, it's dramatized, it's over exaggerated, yeah, right. but it's entertainment. But that's like, how people gonna perceive what the fuck is going on. So they don't have no empathy for nobody like that. Mm. It's like you like that because you chose to be like that. Right. They're not feeling sorry for nobody. So those are the type of games and stuff that they play. And I feel sorry for it, but that's why we need to organize and mobilize to really stand behind people. Because mm-hmm. other than that, we just talking. <laughs> yeah. Just like this. <laughs> Sitting down on the couch, just yeah, talking. Chilling. How do you feel about the current, like, because I don't know if you, like, up to laws in other states, but Georgia just recently passed a law with guns. Oh, that, that, that make mm. it so, like, as long as you're not, like, legally prohibited from holding a gun like a felon or something of that nature or like you not blind or something like that you can carry a gun 
without a permit, without going through anybody, you can just buy a gun and carry. So how do you feel like, how do you feel about like the current gun laws that's going on in the black community? And um, like, you know, I don't think them gun laws got anything to do with the black community. Mm -hmm. Um, If we being completely honest, Georgia is, if I'm not mistaken, is going to a red state. Something like that, yeah. Um, the gun laws for black people in the inner city mm. is always going to be strict. <laughs> mm. like, yeah, okay. It's in definitely the, hard. In, in the like city, D.C., New York, places like that, it's like, nah, nigga, you're not getting a, lun- a gun unless you jump through four hoops, do a spin of Rudy, and run a Same. mile type shit. They're going to make Crazy. you do wild shit to have to actually get that. Yeah. But down the south, niggas have always had guns. Mm. <laughs> yeah. This is what it is. These conversations, I, I feel like they only brought up to basically distract you from what's really going on. It's mm. clickbait shit. And we mm. make me honest, guns don't kill people. People, people keep people kill people. Mm-hmm. Right. And now we go from that and we say, all right, why do people kill people? And that's a whole other conversation that we don't have enough time to talk about. Because there's plenty of reasons why niggas is killing each other. There's plenty of reasons why white yeah. kids is out here going and shooting up schools and shit like yeah. that. But simply having a gun to protect yourself, if you are a black person in America, the camera right there, you're a black right person in America, you're able body, go get you a gun, get your AR, put that shit on your wall. Get right. you a pistol, put that shit in your hip. Right. And mind your business. <laughs> That's yeah. simple. Literally, everybody has the right to be able to protect themselves. Right. Because as a black man in America, my life is in danger every single day. Right. Simply for being a black man in America. Mm-hmm. Look at me. I got dreads. They already think they I got already, a gun. They already, mm-hmm. they already think, think I got a gun. Of charity, yeah. So I got to protect myself. Mm-hmm. And I encourage everybody else to do the same. You know what I'm saying? Now, when people sit there, they see a, a black man with a gun with dreads. They think he's a thug. But you sit there, a white dude, redneck, with guns, with his kids. He he a patriot. Right. He's right. a patriot. He's, a patriot. He's protecting his family. But if I post with my nephews and shit, and we all got ARs and shit like that, yeah. we're going to look like thugs. Because, again, perception. Mm-hmm. That's the picture that they paint. So I'm not buying into none of that shit. So I'm going to protect myself. I'm going to protect my motherfucking family. And I encourage all able-bodied black men who have family and kids to do the same thing. Because you can't rely on nobody else to protect you other than that. So yeah. would you, you, you would say knowing gun safety would be a big part of that, too? We got gun safety. We got gun control. It's always been here. You know, you got to go through background checks to certain extents to get yeah, guns get and gun stuff like that. Crazy. It's right. all about, it's again, they're going to sit there every year. It goes the same shit. Police brutality, mm-hmm. LGBT rights, gun control. Mass school shooting. Health care, <laughs> mass school shooting. Honestly. Like, and then the next year. And then they do the same shit, and they have some wild ass event that they just keep all over the news to keep you focused on them mm-hmm. type of. It's like, bro, nigga, go get you a gun. Love who you love, right? <laughs> and don't yeah. shoot up no fucking schools type right. shit. Cause last time I checked, I'm a black man, and we don't have problems shooting up schools. I, I mean, mean, yeah, <laughs> I, don't yeah. Don't, I don't think most black people got that when they on they that radar. List, they list. You know why? Right. Because we right. got our ass whooped. <laughs> like somebody will go shoot up a school. You go home, you get your ass beat, bro. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, nah, nah, really, oh, yeah. Man, you you gonna say what? Ass. What? <laughs> Don't get the switch. The what? Get the switch. <laughs> Not that switch. The other switch. You hear me? <laughs> the switch. Real loud. Nah, for real. Um, I want to talk a little bit about like your college experience and how, cause you, you what, what school, what school did you go to? I went, went to um, NC State. Boom. State. Mm. 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 He kept the book bag no, on the mm. couch. Mm. Oh no, nah, this is a new joint. They, you know, shout out to NC State. NC State alum in the building. You go back. So first, I want to ask, how do how do you think going to college and getting away from the city changed your perspective on the city? Um, like home, you know, it was big kids. because again, when you're from the city, and most people who born in the city are raised, live, and die within a ten mile radius of that hospital yeah. that they were birthed in. Yeah. So they don't mm. never get to see nothing else. Mm. You got the motherfuckers who every now and then. They go to the Bahamas and they keep the picture up before they <laughs> get, take me back. <laughs> they keep me back. Four years later, four years later, same shit. Like you ain't never <laughs> been back there after that. You know what I'm mean? right, saying? Right. Like, but at the end of the day, like I get it. Like that's that just shows you how much people wish they can go, but a lot of people don't have yeah. you know where to go. And I'm a sidetrack, make sure I come back to that. But it's like <laughs> okay. that just uh, takes you deeper to, you know, niggas being niggas. It's like mm-hmm. they tell us our history starts with slavery. We are niggas who people brought over here. So all we know is like our hood. Mm. You can't if you ask Africans, you know, what I'm saying where they from, they could take you back to a village mm. and mm. a whale and a donkey type shit and a mm. name of it. They can give you a dialect. They can give you a language. They can give you all types of shit. You Latinos, Central America, South America. I'm Mexican. Yeah. Mm. Don't you ever call me Dominican. 
Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So they know all of that shit. It's like, oh, we know it's southeast, uptown, and, and yeah. northeast. You know right. what I'm saying? We don't know nothing else. We know the projects. We know that address. You know what I'm saying? That's that was on our uh, on that we had to get a school to go to school in that zone type shit. Yeah. We know our neighborhood. So it's like most people don't they don't know nothing else. Mm. So that um that right there it just shows it's a deeper meaning behind like bro niggas is never if everybody just left America right now and said hey America's closed everybody go back home. <laughs> Everybody could leave except us. Yeah. Because right. we don't we know don't where have, to go. We don't have a place. They say we yeah. came from Africa. We go back to Africa. They, y'all niggas ain't from here. Right. They're going to say what? <laughs> They're going to look at us crazy. Hey, like, y'all better keep y'all gangster thuggish ass to somewhere fucking else. That's right. Go somewhere else. Mm-hmm. Never think about it. Trinidad, Jamaica. Yeah. Haiti. Everybody has somewhere to go except who? Right. Niggas. Mm-hmm. We ain't got nowhere to go. So, again, the least you can do is leave your city <laughs> and go be around people of different cultures and you know, with different mindsets. And yeah. for me, going to college was big because I didn't even go to, I didn't went to a PWI. I went to the biggest PWI in, um, my intuition been telling me you want better days. Ain't met the puppets who bluff and put some symbolic change and make it rain. Oh Lord, come feel my pain. He spit like cold till it hit like Wayne.